The human rights campaign announces a state of emergency for LGBTQ plus people. Biden hosts a major White House pride event and a trans influencer took his top off. All of that and more on Speechless Cut for Time. Real quick, before we get into everything, everybody, I do have to shout out Paul Garcia Productions. This video is brought to you by Paul Garcia Productions. It is great work. Check out his information in the bio. Paul Garcia Productions out of Central Illinois will help your business get more business. But let's get on to it. The Human Rights Campaign, you guys might have heard of them. They have like, they're like a blue square with an equal, a yellow equal sign in the middle of it. Yeah, they're a far left uh, non-for-profit that declared its first ever state of emergency on June 6th for LGBTQ plus people. And I'm sure you can guess as to why. It's entirely over policy. They say over 500 pieces of legislation have been introduced with over 75 passed that are anti-LGBTQ. Well, everybody, here's the thing. When looking at their vague descriptions of the legislation mentioned, I'll tell you, you could probably replace anti-LGBTQ with pro-woman, pro-child, pro objective truth, and it would probably fit and be actually a more apt description of the legislation. The legislation they refer to are things like the Florida's anti-groomer bill that says you as a teacher cannot talk about sexuality in a classroom to a bunch of five-year-olds. Sorry, didn't know that was anti-LGBTQ to save sex ed for later when someone's more age appropriate. Didn't know. Other things that they mention is they say is they say uh, transgender sports bans, child sex change bans, and saying that you have to use the bathroom that you were assigned with the gender that you were assigned at birth. No, the gender you were born as. They say that's pushing people to, quote, lose access to life-saving medical care, comprehensive and inclusive education, and activities, spaces, and facilities. Okay, well, that's a bold-faced lie, of course. You want to know I know? Because doctors have a legal obligation to treat anyone that is dying with life-saving medical care. They can't refuse it. If they do, they would be subject to lawsuits, losing their license, jail time. But the thing is, is that getting a certain body part removed or getting hormone-changing drugs, puberty blockers, is to, to the far-left zealots, that's life-saving medical care. When in reality, it's cosmetic and not life-saving. So I, I don't know what they're talking about here. But anyways, um, so what this whole state of emergency is genuinely about, the human rights campaign put forth, is it's a cry and a whine from a prominent progressive organization. They're saying, state of emergency, ah! That's what they're saying. It's a state of emergency. It's a cry and a whine to get a headline like that Dr. Seuss kind of reference there. I don't know. But it's it's really, it's a progressive organization trying to make media attention to push their progressive agenda, their un-American agenda. And it's a publicity stunt. But frankly, it's pretty small actually compared to what Biden did. So there's a few different controversies here. On June 10th, President Biden hosted a Pride Month 2023 event at the White House, sparking national debate over a slew of controversies associated with the event. So let's go through all of these topics, or as many as I as I found here. If I missed any, put it in the comments. Let me know. Uh, and also, real quick, everybody, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'd really appreciate it. Like, subscribe, share. Please, please, please. But let's go through these topics, shall we? First off, in the decorations, so the decorations alone, there were two American flags that were sandwiching a pride flag hanging from the White House. And they were all at equal level. Essentially, it was an image promoting our now state-sponsored and sanctioned homosexuality. Maybe it would one day be state-mandated homosexuality. Who knows with Biden? Who knows? Who knows? But here's what Biden's handlers put on Twitter. I'll pull it up here for you guys now. Biden's handlers had this to say about the pride flag. Um, and it obviously makes it look like it's coming from Biden himself. Uh, but we can see here it says, Today the People's House, your house, reminder, this is, this is your house, sends a clear message to the country and the world. America is a nation of pride. And if this is what it said, I'd have no disagreement. American is and should be a nation of pride, but not this kind of pride as we see it. Not this kind of pride. No, American should be, America should be a place in which we are proud of our country. 
proud of our heritage, proud of the White House. But instead, President Biden chooses to disrespect it. And I wanted to compare this. Let's take a look again at this one real quick um, at exactly some some different decorations the White House has had over the years so or over the since Biden has taken office. So when President Biden, this is for Easter, Christmas, a few others, too. So this is right here. You can see this is Easter. Uh, Next one, this one's Veterans Day. Then following that, we have Christmas. You can see the snow there and everything. And then we have Pride Month. Yeah, Pride Month. The zealots come to play, everybody. The pride zealots. And so here's really what we have. As we're looking at this, many took differently. They didn't see this as necessarily a, a, a symbol of pride in in country or anything like that. Now, out of the New York Post, prominent military veterans have accused the Biden administration of diminishing the American flag by placing a pride banner at the center of the display over the weekend. As you can see, critics say the administration ran afoul of U.S. flag code, which states the stars and stripes, quote, should be at the center and at the highest point of the group when a number of flags of states or localities or pennants of societies are grouped and displayed from staffs. Army veteran and Florida Republican Congressman Corey Mills said, quote, the millions of Americans that have served under this flag and the hundreds of thousands of Americans that have given their last full measure to defend this flag have been disrespected by this action. Absolutely. Absolutely, Corey Mills. And this does go against flag code. And I don't know what the penalty is for that. Um, Really, I mean, it's not even about a penalty as much for me. Really, it's just about the disrespect to the country that we are consistently seeing from the Biden administration. I'm not surprised by this action, though. That's the thing. I'm not surprised by this action because it's pretty on par with Biden and the Democrats' recent messaging. The recent messaging is your identity, whether that be sexuality, race, perceived gender, whatever. That's more important than your American identity to the left. Being an American should be your greatest pride, but not to Democrats. That's not how they see it. And here's the thing is this whole disrespect and everything for for country to veterans and everything doesn't stop there. In fact, here is what Biden had to say about all of these members of the trans and, and community. And everything. We all talk about courage. Well, I see more courage in this lawn than I've seen at any time in the recent past. We all talk about courage. One more time. Well, I see more courage in this lawn than I've seen at any time in the recent past. More courage in that lawn from all these pride members, whatever. And I'm not trying to diminish what maybe some gay people have had to go through in the past. I know like living that part, I'm not, I'm not against gay marriage and stuff like that. Go do what you want in that sense. But more courage than maybe people that have lived in Afghanistan. This is the president of the United States, the leader of the United States military, person that visits military bases regularly, at least I I, kind of hope. And this is the most courage you've ever seen. That's the most courage you've ever seen. A man that I I believe he's been to Ukraine. I mean, people that are fighting there and this is still the most courage you've ever seen. It makes no sense, but actually it kind of does. I'll be honest, because that's rich coming from the guy that had this to say about his alleged crack addict and prostitute enthusiast son, Hunter. He's a grown man. He is the smartest man I know. I mean, in front of pure intellectual capacity, he's a. It's pretty on par. It's pretty on par that that's what Biden would have to say about that group and how kind of misappropriating he is when it comes to the uses, use of the words brave and courageous. But in the biggest controversy, over this big pride event. Things turned crazy when trans model Rose Montoya went topless during the White House pride party after meeting President Biden. So here is Rose Montoya's TikTok that he made. And and I know that he doesn't necessarily even look like it, uh, but I do want to preface all this with saying that this video is a little graphic. Um, So just if, if that's your thing, you could skip ahead. Um, but here is the trans influencers video. Welcome to the White House. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Year. Happy Pride Life. Yeah. Transgender children. 
You are beautiful. You are heard. You belong. You are understood. You are loved. And you belong. Yeah. The bravest, the most inspiring people I've ever known. I mean, you're welcome. Good folks. Can we take a little video? Hi, Mr. President. It is an honor. France rights of human rights. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's a video. 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 Courageous, stunning, brave. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're so courageous, stunning, and brave. You're so, so courageous, stunning, brave. Belong, belong. All those buzzwords that Biden wants to use, all that crap. Um, But yeah. And so I feel like, I feel like there's not even much I can say. I feel like you're probably having a lot of the comparable feelings I am. Uh, simple disrespect, significant disrespect from this influencer to the White House, to the uh, symbols of America. Um, an even bigger disrespect from President Biden. But the disrespect continues when this influencer, Rose Montoya, doubled down on the action in a response to the controversy on TikTok. So here is that. Let's take a look. It has recently come to my attention that conservatives are trying to use the video of me topless at the White House to try to call the community groomers, etc and i would just is, like yeah. to say that first of all going topless in washington dc is legal well let's start with that one right there it's legal so it must be okay right it's legal so it must be okay um no here's the big thing and the left does this a lot too um the right a little bit but the left does this a lot is just because something is legal doesn't necessarily make it right legality and mor morality are not equal period period in some states, you can smoke weed. Does that mean it's the right thing to do? There's a lot of things that are legal, but they're not correct. They're not respectful. They're not the things to do in that moment. But let's continue with more crap coming out of this influencer. And I fully support the movement in freeing the nipple because why is my chest now deemed inappropriate or illegal because when you're I at show the White it off. House, idiot. However, before coming out as trans, it was not. All you're doing is affirming that I am a woman. Were, were you at oh. no, 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 no. We're not affirming that you were a woman. Were you at the White House before you were trans? Let's talk about that. That's a whole other video right there. But are you at the White House for anything other than your your perceived identity? Is that really an achievement, an accomplishment? Ask yourselves that. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Is that really an achievement, an accomplishment? So, no, it's not all of a sudden because you're trans or because you think you're a woman, anything like that. It is because you were at the White House, the People's House, a place in which where you were to do that is disrespectful. Let's keep going. All you're doing is saying that trans women are women because for some reason, people like to sexualize women's bodies people sexualize that they are that's another thing people sexualize all bodies all bodies are all bodies are sexualized there's it's it's like a, a fetish thing it's it's all over the place all bodies are sexualized male female whatever even trans bodies to some are sexualized it's gross it's weird yes but all bodies are sexualized it's not just it's not exclusive let's keep going Brett. My trans masculine friends were showing off their top surgery scars and living in joy. Which was also disrespectful. You're the, them with their, because they cut their breasts off. That was also disrespectful to be topless at the White House. Anyways, more. And I wanted to join them. And because it is perfectly within the law in Washington, D.C., I decided to join them and cover my nipples just to play it safe. Because oh, I wow. wanted to be fully free. Oh, wow. You're so great because you decided to try to play it. Oh, my God. Me and myself. I had zero intention of trying to be vulgar or be profane in any way. I was simply living in joy, living my truth and existing in my body. Happy pride. Free the nipple. Oh, my God. Making this all about a free the nipple campaign. Whatever. Whatever. 
here's the thing about all this. It wasn't about you being trans. It wasn't about because you, you really what it was about is it was you were showing disrespect. You were showing disrespect because man, woman, whatever shouldn't be topless at the White House. It's not about you being trans or a man or pretending to be a woman. No one should be topless at the people's house. It's not a spring blip break in Florida. You're not on some topless beach in some great fun country outside of this. No, you're at a historic monument that houses what is supposed to be the most powerful man in the world for the greatest country in the world. In all, though, the bigger picture, the bigger picture expanded out a little bit is that this is all about Biden's image. Frankly, it's nothing we didn't already know. The man entered the House, the White House, saying that he was going to be the unifying president. But he continues only to divide and blatantly disrespecting America and putting a very weak image out to the rest of the world. This whole event makes him and everyone out there look like a fool. I don't, it's not because you're trans, not because you're gay, not because of anything like that. But the way that you're acting on the White House lawn and the things that you are saying that are that diminish the achievements of people that have given their life for this nation make you look like a fool that doesn't deserve my respect. Again, not because you're gay or trans, whatever. It's because you're acting foolish. A straight person, a straight white guy looking exactly like me doing the exact same things would also look foolish and not deserve my respect. If that's the way you behave at the White House, I would hate to see how you behave in other public places. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please, 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 again, like, subscribe, share. Check out one of these videos that's coming up on the sides, too. God bless you, and God bless America.